Welcome back. As Zimbabwe prepares to bury former Prime Minister and Opposition Leader Morgan Changarai on Tuesday, a memorial service has been held in his honour in Johannesburg, South Africa. Present at the event were Zimbabweans in exile, as well as members of the diplomatic corps who paid tribute to the late politician who lost his battle with colon cancer last week in South Africa. There were Zimbabweans and non-Zimbabweans alike, all gathered to honor an icon who dared to stand up against a national hero turned dictator. Morgan Swangirai fortunately saw the fall of Robert Mugabe in his lifetime. It's difficult to realize the exquisite pain that the immediate people who have loved him feel when there is such a huge celebration of who he is. And my prayer is that in that pattern, you will know that you are not alone. The only person who was feared by Mugabe, he is the only person who was feared by Emerson Mnangagwa. And he will continue to fear him, even if he's departed. Members of the diplomatic corps eulogized the late MDCT leader. We join Zimbabweans from across the country in mourning the passing of a national hero and political icon who fearlessly stood against injustice and tirelessly fought for peace and democratic principles. On behalf of the French President Emmanuel Macron, the French government, I would like to convey on our sincere condolences following the passing of uh, uh, Prime Minister Zwangirai. Zwangirai was very esteemed in Norway and many regions deeply admired him and uh, his unwavering uh, commitment to democracy and human rights in Zimbabwe. To many Zimbabweans living in exile in South Africa where Mr. Zwangirai spent his last days, he was a leader that will never be forgotten. His son Vincent thanked everyone for honoring his father. I would like to say that be in prayer. The nation must uh, hold us in support. And uh, we, we are appreciating all the support that we are getting so far. The former Zimbabwean Prime Minister Morgan Swangirai succumbed to colon cancer on the 14th of February in South Africa. His body has been repatriated to Zimbabwe and will be buried at his home village, Buera, on Tuesday. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Divya, Channels Television News. Let's take a look at this report sent in via partners at the United Nations. Well, since the 1960s, Nigeria has been a major contributor of troops and police to the United Nations peace operations, having served in dozens of missions. Recently, Nigerian troops were the military backbone of the UN mission from Liberia from 2003 to 2018, helping to restore security throughout a country that had undergone a brutal civil war. In January 2018, Liberians and the international community watched the first democratic transfer of power in the country in decades. Liberia's new president, George Ware, recently commended UN Mill for its long-standing support to peace and stability. Nigeria was one of the first countries to provide troops in Liberia in 2003 and was among the last to leave, its final troops flying out just last week. Okay, I have a good news for you. I'm coming back home. Soldiers go on patrol on daily basis to take care of the civilians, the locals, just to make sure everything is normal. The reason why I'm here in Liberia is to make peace.
to make sure everything is calm. So I'm happy now because everything is calm. There is peace. I am willing to join another peacekeeping mission operation if given the opportunity because I see it as a service to humanity, as I see it as a service to the whole world. Well, there's nothing like returning home after a job well done. Well, children in a township in South Africa's KwaZulu-Natal province are learning that taking care of a pet is a full-time job, and in return, there is less time to spend on the streets where they can be exposed to drugs and violence at an early age. The Funda Ninja Project holds sessions every week where children learn skills on how to properly care for their dogs. The Funda Nanja program, which means learn with a dog in Zulu, is dedicated to teaching young children how to treat their dogs responsibly, lovingly and respectfully, values that children can carry further than their relationships with their pets. Uh, I started Funda Nanja at 20, 2012 and because of the things that is happening in our location, the boys are getting to drugs and stuff, so I didn't want to get involved. South Africa has one of the world's highest crime rates where drugs and guns are used by notorious gangs to fuel violence. In a country where more than 27% of the population is unemployed and much of the economy is still in the hands of the white minority, many young black South Africans have limited options. Fundananja targets children from townships where young people can easily get lured into gangs and a life of drugs. The values instilled through the program have had a positive impact on the children, the dogs and the community as a whole. The training runs on donations and other forms of sponsorship which ensures that the children get vaccinated, dewormed and treated for ticks and fleas. We see children growing in confidence, we see children growing in self-esteem, we see children growing in terms of being responsible, we see a difference in the dogs. Um, we very seldom see a dog that's showing uh, malnutrition or neglect because the children take pride in their dogs, the community takes pride in their dogs. Since the project began in 2009, parents and guardians say there's new hope for the future of the children in the townships. The program, which started with 12 trainees, now attracts between 80 and 100 children to each session. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am BC at Dubai.